Good morning. morning. Carrie is going to be preaching today, and we're glad for that. Um, Starting next week, she will begin her deaconess intern uh, responsibilities, so she'll be our assisting minister from now on after starting next week. Uh, Today is Reformation Sunday. You notice red anywhere? The red always depicts the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, as we know, uh, came to Martin Luther and other people who wanted more freedom in their religion, freedom in their church, freedom to worship God. And so because of that, we have the Reformation and we celebrate that uh, on this day uh, every every year. Uh, Once again, uh, Denny's gonna begin with a stewardship message. Good morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. We know this as the words of the doxology. It's a hymn of thanks, a praise to God whom all blessings flow. Today, this is our second and final stewardship talk. And as we mentioned last Sunday, this is the time of year where we especially look at the the harvest. As you drive around the countryside, you'll see that taking place. And it's during this time of the harvest that we are brought to think of our blessings and the things that God has given us. And we want to take time and give thanks for all of those blessings because it is from God that all things come. As we think of that, we want to take just a little time to consider our blessings and then to consider our thanks to God. And one way of doing that is through our giving And that involves our looking ahead to next year and doing our pledging and our our planning. So I would ask you as you consider your pledge, your thanks to God, that you take time to count your blessings and then look toward the information and the questions that are asked on the commitment card. Commitment cards can be hard mailed in, they can be emailed in, directed to the financial secretary so that we don't go through different channels, it's going directly to one person. We want to keep confidentiality. They can be dropped off inside in the box as you come in of a morning if you're attending in person, you can do that as well. Or you can drop it off at the church and we'll put them away, make sure that they're kept safe and and secret. But as you consider the pledge, I know the the pledge card mentions on it that we would like to return by November 15th. I would encourage you to make it by next Sunday, November the 1st, because that gives our financial or our budget committee enough time to consider that as we put our budget together for 2021. And we're able to present that at the November uh, council meeting. So we need to have as much information as we can so that we can make a, uh, a good adjustment and a, a way to plan our activities because it's through the giving that we give that our committees, our, our boards, our different groups are able to function and to do the things that they want to do. Our, our outreaches, our evangelism, our everything we have in our church, the, the way we, we operate is, is so much can, uh, dependent upon you know, our, our giving. Like your own family budget, you, don't, uh, you, you can't afford to spend more than you bring in, so we have to balance those things. So as you are considering your pledges, remember as we give thanks and we take time to count our blessings, 
And most of all, know where our blessings come from. And it's God who gives us everything. God is in control. Whatever the world is doing this day and whatever situations are taking place in our country and in our world, God is in control. He is there. He provides daily for us. So prayerfully consider your considerations both monetarily and also in your service through your physical uh, activities. We are God's hand and God's feet so on, the, on this earth. So we are working to serve him. So praise God from whom all blessings flow. Count your blessings and give thanks. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. 
who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled, a troubled and penitent, penitent sinner, sinner, confess to you all my sins, sins and iniquities, and iniquities with, with which I have offended you, and, and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am, I am sorry for them, and repent, and repent of them, and, and pray for your boundless mercy. For, for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Forgive my sins, give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life, and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, in vain do the builders labor. Unless the Lord builds the house. In vain do the labors builder. Surely the Lord is in this place. This is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Surely the Lord is in this place. This is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. O oh, come, let us worship. O oh, come, let us worship.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The renewed covenant will not be breakable. Like the old covenant, it will expect the people to live upright lives. To know the Lord means that one will defend the cause of the poor and needy. The renewed covenant is possible only because the Lord will forgive iniquity and not remember sin. Our hope lies in a God who forgets. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, 
a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. We will now read Psalm 46 responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord, what awesome things he has done on earth. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Our second reading is from the third chapter of Romans. Paul's words stand at the heart of the preaching of Martin Luther and other Reformation leaders. No human beings make themselves right with God through works of the law. We are brought into a right relationship with God through the divine activity centered in Christ's death. This act is a gift of grace that liberates us from sin and empowers our faith in Jesus Christ. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is, and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. According to John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus speaks of truth and freedom as spiritual realities known throughout his word. He reveals the truth that sets people free from sin. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, 
We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Today's New Testament lesson from Romans about justification by grace through faith is a very fitting text for Reformation Sunday. But some of the scriptural commentary I came across this week suggested that there might be some danger in that, however. One author stated that perhaps one of the most important points about this passage is that we are never far from misunderstanding or even misusing what seems to be the central statement of God's redemption in Jesus Christ. Too often we stand upon our traditions and theology to define who God is and what God does. And throughout scripture, God continually shows God's people the inadequacy of doing this. He added that it is not that we might be missing the mark, although we should always be attentive to this reality. It is that we should not get too comfortable. But I think it's so easy to become comfortable in this good news. It brings us poor, miserable sinners some relief from all of the guilt. We can rest in the grace of God, and rest is good. We need rest, especially now. But sometimes too much rest can cause us to become inactive. This is the danger of taking God's grace too seriously, resting in quietness and in action. A few years ago, I believe it was the year of the celebration of 500 years of the Reformation, Pastor Scales led us in a book study of Martin Luther and the called life. The book includes a whole chapter on our vocation as citizens. Faith and politics the cringeworthy stuff we do not like to talk about. Because they speak to matters we hold dear to our hearts, we avoid talking about faith and politics and keep our opinions to ourselves, lest we have those impassioned, non-dinner table voice conversations like I spoke about in my homily last month. We have a vocation to be involved in the world. Our calling as citizens does not offer us the luxury of keeping our opinions to ourselves. Martin Luther makes clear our vocation as citizens, and he says this includes politics. In today's contentious climate, maybe there's a better term to use instead of politics. Service in the community, advocacy, social justice. I do not know that these words are any more comfortable. God challenges us. His good news should keep us uncomfortable. We celebrate the Reformation today because Martin Luther was a protester. Many of you know the name Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was a Lutheran theologian known for his steadfast resistance to the Nazi regime. His writings on Christianity's role in the secular world have become widely influential. He expressed vocal opposition to Hitler's euthanasia program and genocidal persecution of the Jews. He was arrested, imprisoned, and was hanged for his treason. In the Martin Luther book study, we learn that Bonhoeffer was dismayed by the ability of Christians to look the other way, comfortable in their grace, when the vulnerable, the weak, and the Jews were deemed unworthy of life. Most notably, he said, we are not Christ, but if we want to be Christians, we must have some share in Christ's large heartedness by acting with responsibility and in freedom when the hour of danger comes, and be showing a real compassion that springs not from fear, but from the liberating and redeeming love of Christ for all who suffer. Christians are called to compassion and action, not out of their own sufferings, but by the sufferings of their brothers and sisters for whose sake Christ suffered. Christ suffered for all. 
the truth. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus tells us that because of this truth, we are set free. As I was sitting with the text this week, I kept thinking about the word truth and what truth means today. Where do we find the truth today? Where can we find the truth today? We have access to, and are even targeted by, alternative facts, conspiracy theories, and misinformation more than ever before. And with left and right-leaning news sources, it is hard work to be rightly informed these days. This month, I watched a weekly broadcast of a panel of female Christian leaders who have been discussing faith, gender, race, and politics. Their first week's discussion was titled, Truth on Trial. They asked the question, does truth matter? Of course it does. Then they asked, who's truth? Ah. The discussion continued about the difference between a lived experience and what we are taught or encouraged to think and feel. There is a difference between knowing intellectually what we see in the news and knowing relationally when we listen to someone who has lived or is presently living that trauma. There is a difference between watching edited clips of protesting and listening to a friend describe pouring milk over others and himself to ease the burning pain from tear gas. There is a difference between seeing maps and charts of COVID-19 outbreaks and sitting in fear with a loved one who has tested positive. Who's truth? To be rightly informed requires very careful listening. And when someone tells you their truth, you are on sacred ground. The Gospel of John says, Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Free from sin. Free from fear. Free to serve. Free to abide uncomfortably in his word. When we meet one another where they are, as they are, in kindness and with compassion, we are truly greeting Jesus. Thanks be to God when we know Jesus tells us his truth, for freedom is ours. Thanks be to God for grace. Amen.
let us confess our faith by saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and, and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have several requests that we want to remember in our prayers. Denise Bueller's daughter had her baby, so Kristen, so we want to give thanks for that. Sandra Rubin's brother's sister-in-law was uh, started a cancer treatment, uh, um, so we want to remember her, of course. Helene, who is Hildegard Hotstetler's sister, she passed away uh, this week. And we want to remember Leanne, who had surgery, and also Kathy, who has started her treatment. And uh, I'd like for you to remember my brother John, uh, who's going to be having heart surgery. It's it always means something to him being in Houston that he has someone praying for him in Indiana. So we want to, he, he was very thankful for that. With confidence in God's mercy and grace, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O oh God, where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking and protect all in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Release those living in bondage to debts, chronic pain or addiction. Grant healing touch to those who are ill, especially those we name now either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Join us in the next petition. For Griffith Lutheran, Lutheran Church, Church, help us to use our many blessings to grow our, our church to make, make a difference, difference in our lives and in our community. Help, Help us that we may grow Christ-centered relationships in our communities through love and service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther, and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O oh God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Wise and gracious God, receive, receive the, the labor, labor of our hands, hands these, these gifts of money, bread, and wine, along with the offering of our lives. Nourish us with the life of your Son, that we might be his body in the world, making known your abundant mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to establish in us a living faith and prepare us joyfully to receive our Redeemer who comes to us in his body and blood. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread and forgive, as forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and, the and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey.
body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I think you would agree with me. I think our flowers have been gorgeous, don't you? They've just been breathtaking. So thank you for uh, providing those, those of you who do each Sunday. Uh, remember our prayer vigil will be um, on November the 3rd from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We still have uh, some spaces that we'd like for you to fill. And the uh, committee would prefer, if, if at all possible, that uh, if you would turn in your commitment cards before next Sunday, it would help them uh, to determine our budget and, and what, we would, what we see in the future. So if, if, if you can uh, do that, the cards are out here. There's one, if you received an email, you can print that out and, and bring it in or send it in or uh, however you would like to do it. As I said, the orange, orange cards are out here and you can put them in the box. So it would be helpful if, you, if we could have that before next Sunday, November the 1st. Please stand. <clears throat> and thank you, Carrie. Thank you very much. Very meaningful. People of God, you have been called to be disciples of Christ. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God through him. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Remember, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, November the 1st, and if you have a loved one you would like for us to remember, please give us the name of that person and a picture if you would like. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thank you.